Quick introduction about what we do at BAA. Uh, we are a body of over 250 buying agents uh, or sourcing consultants as we would like to call ourselves. What do we do? We are the marketing campaign of India. As simple as that. We promote Make in India. We promote every product that goes out of India. We are your feet on the ground representing all international customers. We've estimated about 70% of the buying out of India happens through buying agents. That goes to show the strength of this service sector that we've been trying to promote for a very long time and finally organized ourselves in 2016. We streamline the buying operations while we're doing that. We also work with the MSME sector in a significant way. People, all of you sitting here, we are working with you closely across product portfolios. And we provide a common ground for understanding between the buyers, between the suppliers, and the uh, complete uh, buying community. Now, why am I standing here today? We've spoken about scale, speed, sustainability. We've had beautiful interventions about what is needed to promote export. But do we really know what the buyer is asking for today? And that is the perspective I bring to the table today as to what the buying community, we as buying and sourcing consultants, our customers who are actually buying the product, expecting out of us. I'll be discussing a few points here which will be key to how sales can be increased for our community as such. Uh, compliance, quality, delivery, communication, trend setting and image building. Before I go deep into all these discussions, I would have a quick snapshot of what the industry in the world, in the leather market stands today. In 2021, the world leather market was about $408 billion. Now out of this, 47% was only footwear, followed very closely by about 20-22%, which was garments. 55% was genuine leather. We're estimating leather to be $626 billion by 2028, the world market I'm talking about. And we are talking here today, $30 billion by 2025. Essentially, we're, what we're asking for is about 5.8% of the market share by 2025. We have a prime minister who is a leader known to the world, who's been promoting trade, promoting industry. We have 16.5%, 7% pop, uh, population of the world. Achieving 6% nearly is not difficult with the kind of product we have, with the kind of Atiti Devo Bhayava mentality we hold, and with the kind of hard-working ethos this country has been working towards. Talking about compliance, why do we need compliance? Very simply, we've sp spoken about sustainability. We are all moving towards the ethical sourcing and a sustainable world. Customers are asking, are you using child labor? Are you throwing a pollutants into the environment? It is customer asking. It's not only our customers. It is a final customer who brings into the product or in their houses who is saying, I want a sustainable product. I want to protect my environment. I want my generations to be at a place where we've not depleted the environment completely. It is important to cater to that customer that India has to move towards compliance. We have today with us uh, one of our very old buying agents, Ms. Rohini Suri. She is one of the first people who started compliance in India with JCPenney in 1984. So when we were talking about compliance, that was garment compliance that started in 1984. And she took about five years to have about 20, 25 uh, companies compliant. And that was the first set of compliance that happened in India. If you see that, that led, led to a beautiful thing, which was organization of the garment industry. In all of the sectors that exist today, one of the sectors which is most organized is the garment sector. And that is where it is stemming from. So compliance also invariably leads to a better organization of the industry and the sector. Definitely it builds the trust. When a company knows that our factories are compliant, they win the trust to actually invest into these factories. We've seen in 2020, Bangladesh suffered severely. Their exports went down by 22%. Why? Because they were polluting their main river. People didn't want to buy from them. Compliance became the buzzword in Bangladesh after that. And they've been doing beautifully after that. So we want to build the trust amongst our buyers to bring them into India. And most importantly, 
as we all human beings say, it improves the working condition. We've spoken about, got a very beautifully put about carbon footprint. We're talking about carbon footprint. We are talking about environmental impact. All this is a part of compliance. We need it. I know the bigger business houses sitting today here, they would say we are all compliant. But for the industry per se to step forward, we don't only need the bigger business houses to be compliant, we need the industry to be compliant, the smaller players to step up and be compliant to bring more faith across the world in what we are manufacturing. Going forward to quality, when I say achieve maximum possible standardization on quality, I'm sure all the exporters are going to come back to me saying leather hai. Standardization nahi ho sakta. We don't know how it will react. I agree. I totally agree. But my question is, can we control these variations? Can we not? We can control these variations. Can we educate our customers to control these variations? Can we give them swatch pans? Can we give them videos of how the leather is being treated? How the leather is being colored? Let them know right at the sampling stage, at the initial stage, what really is the way. Let them understand the process. It is not about them being unreasonable. When they don't know, they will ask for anything. We can ask for the moon. They are asking us for the moon. But we have to deliver. We know our product. We know our process. We know our manufacturing. Can we educate our customers? Most importantly, we need to invest in technology. We are handcrafted. We are a handcrafted nation. But that doesn't say that we cannot invest in technology, machinery. We can. How many of us are looking for those new machineries that are actually coming into the market? I mean, I'll give you a classic case in point. When we buy furniture from India versus China, the biggest change that happens and the biggest thing that you would observe, India mein sofa ki jo edge hai, piping hai, kabhi bhi seedhi nahi aati hai. Never ever. China mein ek sofa utha lo aap, every piping will be prim and proper and straight. Now, why would a customer buy from India when they can get perfection out of China? We can be handcrafted, but then build a story around it. Delivery and communication, you know, these are two things every buyer, every buyer gets bothered with. Today, COVID has taken away everything from delivery, but then again, even when COVID was not there, India ka hamara sab ka sochna hai, chalta hai, hota hai, ab chal nahi pa raha hai wo. We need to be at a place where we are saying, yes, we've got to do it. If you're committing a 90 days, India ki shadiyo ki tarah, 8 baje ke invite mein 11 baje nahi pahunchna hame. Hame 90 din ke pehle, 85 din pe unko shipment deni hai. It has to be delivered. Now my question to you is, we suddenly come up with Holi, Diwali and Eid. We're all aware of it. Then how come we tell the customers, oh, Diwali ho gai thi, do hafte hai labor nahi hai, it's like shipment delay ho jai ki. How is that possible? Didn't we know when we took the order that there is going to be a Holi, Diwali and Eid in between and we are going to lose two weeks in labor? Did we not know that we have container issues today? We don't get containers immediately, so we have to buffer in the timing so that we are on time for uh, delivery. Do we know whether our supply chain is reliable? Mere sub supplier ne bola mein teez din mein dunga. With your experience in the past, do you know what teez din mein dega ke nahi dega? Kya wo pitalas din mein dega? Kya wo saat din mein dega? We need to know this. The idea for us is to under commit and over deliver. This is the mantra that India really needs to learn. Kam bolo zada karo. Rather than badi badi baate karo or itna sa perform karo. That is what we need to learn because that is what the buyer is expecting. They love people who come up and say no to their face. They say, learn to say a no. If you cannot do it in 120 days, you have genuine reasons, tell us a no. We are, they're not inhumans. Buyer, gori chamdi dekhte hai, hum logo ko lagta hai, oh my god, buyer hai. We cannot say anything to them. No, it's not like that. They're very reasonable people. You talk to them with the rationale, you talk to them with the reasoning, they will agree, they will understand, they will find solution to your problems. Communicate with them, inform them. Har ke business mein problem aati hai. But they need to know the problems to be able to give you a helping hand. Just saying at the brink of the moment at 90th day, oh, I need 15 more days because my leather came in wrong. My God, we've lost 90 days in deciding to ask for extension of 15 days. No, give them an advance information. They need it. They love it. 
and I can assure you all the big business houses who are doing big business, they already know this. They're not shy of telling a no. They're not shy of sharing a problem because the buyers expect us to be partners. They're not expecting slave manufacturing. They're expecting partners who are going to work with them, alongside them, and fulfill their commitment and expectation. Going forward to the most important thing, Rina has beautifully put forward trends and styling as a key factor. And what we really need to know is what the buyer is expecting when we come to uh, trends. As a buying agent or as a buying house, when we source any product or when we walk the shows, we are expecting kuch naya dekhe, kuch exciting dekhe. When we walk and we see the same old things, same old things, color change ho gaya, size change ho gaya, it is not fun. When it is not fun for us, how can it be fun for anybody outside who is buying from us? We need new things constantly. We need designing. We need a strategy of sampling. We've spoken about sampling strategy. How many samples are we churning around every season? Do we have a strategy? Bees banane, chalis banane, saw banane, hai. time frame laid out, budget hai hamara, kya sochna hai, trends hamne investigate ke, research ke, we need newness all the time, we need sustainable products, we need to use recycled as a mantra, we, used, we need to think through till the level of a, a customer. Talking about the next one is research. Gaurav has beautifully put about sustainability and the development of uh, mycelium, right? So mycelium as one of the new leathers that are coming up and I believe they launched footwear in 2020 with mycelium. That was amazing. Uh, Timberland, they started manufacturing Green Stripe Solar Wake EK Plus. Very complicated name but very, very innovative technique. It is using regenerative uh, leather. Again, Gaurav shared about the regenerative leather. Ermes in 2021, it came up with Victoria Handbag. It was all about mushroom-based vegan leather. People are coming up with new things, but I'm questioning how many of us are doing that in India. If we are saying we need to step forward, we need to step forward from India. We can't just expect to execute. We want to do new things, new research, new development to be able to give something new to the customers. Keep an eye on the competitors and when I say competitors, I'm not meaning the exporters on the left and the right. What I mean is the competitors sitting in Spain, Turkey, Italy, Vietnam, China. What are they doing? How is the sourcing happening? What is the investment in the research design? What are they coming up with? That is very critical for our market. And then study your market. Uh, Amiya ji very beautifully put it, ki bagal ke country mein bikra, yaha pe nahi bikra, aisa kyo hai? That's because we need to study. We need to study buying behaviors. We need to study buying patterns. And you don't really need to go there and do it. There is research and study available. All you need to do is buy. It's buy and invest into understanding the problems of people and giving a solution to that. I was recently talking to somebody who said, I am working on a shoe that is stretchable for children. Isn't that a problem that all of us, each individual sitting in this auditorium today has faced? We are all We are growing. The shoe size was changing every month. We couldn't use it. We spent a lot of money on shoes. But we couldn't use it after a month or two. What a beautiful idea to get a shoe which is stretchable, which can be used. People are working on women's shoes by adjusting the heel size. Amazing, right? Most, and the last one that we are going to talk about is image building. Uh, this is probably one of the most key factors when we talk about uh, India. Because when we are talking about the entire world, image building is becoming very, very critical for us. Marketing your products, what is important? We get a lot of, as buying agents, sourcing consultants, we get a lot of products from across suppliers, across products. But who do we promote? We promote that supplier who gives us product that shows its value on the picture itself. And what I mean by that is, Gandhi photo kichi yaha pe bag rakha, usko photo kich ke phone se bhej diya. You think I will like it or the buyer who is going to buy that product like it? Not at all. It does not reflect the value of the product. You need to actually take good pictures, invest in photography, invest in ambient photography, create flip books of your products, share your products regularly. Again, a very beautifully put about the push and the pull method. We want to give what we are manufacturing. No. We need to get what the buyer is asking for. Understand the expectation of the buyer and then share it regularly with the buyer. 
sometimes just share because they may not need it right now but the next season you will see your inspiration on their mood board so share it regularly create your own story india has a beautiful handcraft story how many of us are really using this to promote our own story and our own product can we give it a human touch create videos around how leather is being made how finishing is being done to actually share what is happening in india and create the story around your product create your own brand again we discussed about this there are not too many brands that originate from india i mean the few brands that come to my mind are royal enfield or kingfisher that's it i can't think of many brands that have really made the mark in the international world and india really needs to start doing that because product hamara hai but brand kisi aur ki hai so why can't we make our own brands what stops us just the marketing mindset we have talented youth we've had uh, discussions with fddi they are upskilling youth why can't we hire talented youth to create marketing strategies to create our own brands target your offerings again going to say offer what your buyer needs and select your market and offer it dubai mein us ka product aur us mein spain ka product nahi chalega we have to share product that fits that market go digital that's the mantra of today after covid everything is go digital nothing is offline today everything is online today have a social media presence have a web presence have a google presence create your presence across the board do seo smo that will help create your credibility now everybody who's sitting here and especially the big business houses we are talking to today and others i can vouch for it the big business house would have been smiling and saying oh hum ye kar rahe hain hum ye kar rahe hain hum ye kar rahe hain it is the industry at large that i'm addressing today that we all need to do it not just the top 1% it is the remaining 99% who needs to make that effort and needs to go forward to make this thought of 30 billion dollars by 2025 achievable thank you